The largest cyber war in history just happened. Beware, guys, a war is at hand. Cyber war includes denial of service attacks, hacker attacks, dissemination of disinformation and propaganda, participation of state-sponsored teams and political blogs, internet surveillance using SORM technology, persecution of cyber dissidents, and other active measures. These activities, although, have been going on for quite some time now, but the biggest and largest scale cyber war just happened. Hello everyone, welcome to Cybercrime Time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you never miss an update about the latest cybercrime news and trends. Let's move on. Russia is behind the largest cybercrime activities. Some of them were coordinated by the Russian Signals Intelligence, which was part of the FSB and formerly a part of the 16th KGB department. Of course it's the Russians. They've been at it since day one, I guess. Ugh. The countries on Russia's hit list include Ukraine and the USA. A Russian cyber weapon called Snake or Ouroboros was reported to have created havoc on Ukrainian government systems. The Snake toolkit began spreading into Ukrainian computer systems. It performed computer network exploitation CNE, as well as highly sophisticated computer network attacks CNA. The Russian APT Fancy Bear used Android malware to target the Ukrainian army's rocket forces and artillery. They distributed an infected version of an Android app whose original purpose was to control targeting data for the D-30 howitzer artillery. The app, used by Ukrainian officers, was loaded with the ex-agent spyware and posted online on military forums. CrowdStrike claims the attack was successful, with more than 80% of Ukrainian D-30 howitzers destroyed, the highest percentage loss of any artillery pieces in the army, a percentage that had never been previously reported and would mean the loss of nearly the entire arsenal of the biggest artillery piece of the Ukrainian armed forces. According to the Ukrainian army, this number is incorrect and that losses in artillery weapons were way below those reported and that those losses have nothing to do with the stated cause. This is just a malicious attempt from the Russians. It's totally unfair. Apparently, this isn't all. They've been causing ruckus in the power sector as well. The US government concluded after a study that a cyber attack caused a power outage in Ukraine which left more than 200,000 people temporarily without power. The Russian hacking group Sandworm, or the Russian government, were possibly behind the malware attack on the Ukrainian power grid, as well as a mining company and a large railway operator. Ukraine accused Russia of attacking the system of electronic interaction of executive bodies, a web portal used by the Ukrainian government to circulate documents by uploading documents that contain macro scripts, which if downloaded and enabled would lead to the computer to secretly download malware that would allow hackers to take over a computer. In January 2022, a cyber attack on Ukraine took down the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other government agencies. In the night of 13th or 14th of June, there was actually a hacker's attack on a number of sites, including the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Science and Science, and others. Although an investigation has not been conclusive, the cyber attacks coincide with the Russo-Ukrainian crisis. Really? What more is left for them to hack? In February 2022, before and after Russian troops entered eastern Ukraine amid an environment of escalating tensions between Ukraine and Russia, several major Ukrainian governmental and business websites were taken down by a series of cyber attacks. U.S. officials attributed the attacks to Russian attackers, although the Russian government denied involvement. Well, of course, they messed with the U.S. as well. What else can be expected of them? Russian hackers had penetrated sensitive parts of the White House computers in recent months. It was said that the FBI, the Secret Service, and other U.S. intelligence agencies categorized the attacks as among the most sophisticated attacks ever launched against U.S. government systems. CNN reported that Russian hackers, likely working for the Russian government, are suspected in the State Department hack. Federal law enforcement, intelligence, and congressional officials briefed on the investigation say the hack of the State Department email system is the worst ever cyber attack intrusion against a federal agency. 
Senior Kremlin advisor and top Russian cyber official Andrei Krutskik told the Russian National Security Conference in Moscow that Russia was working on new strategies for the information arena that was equivalent to testing a nuclear bomb and would allow us to talk to the Americans as equals. The release of hacked emails belonging to the Democratic National Committee, John Podesta and Colin Powell, among others, through DC leaks and WikiLeaks, was said by private sector analysts and US intelligence services to have been of Russian origin. The United States Computer Emergency Response Team released an alert warning that the Russian government was executing a multi-stage intrusion campaign by Russian government cyber actors who targeted small commercial facilities networks where they staged malware, conducted spear phishing, and gained remote access into emergency sector networks. It further noted that after obtaining access, the Russian government cyber actors conducted network reconnaissance, moved laterally, and collected information pertaining to industrial control systems. The hacks targeted at least a dozen U.S. power plants, in addition to water processing, aviation, and government facilities. Hackers from the United States Cyber Command planted malware potentially capable of disrupting the Russian electrical grid. The Kremlin warned that the intrusions could escalate into a cyber war between the two countries. A group known as APT-29, or Cozy Bear, working from Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, breached a top cybersecurity firm and multiple U.S. government agencies, including the Treasury, Commerce, and Energy Departments, and the National Nuclear Security Administration. The hacks occurred through a network management system called SolarWinds Orion. The U.S. government had an emergency meeting on the 12th of December 2020, and the press reported the hack the next day. When Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service performs such hacks, it's typically for traditional espionage purposes, stealing information that might help the Kremlin understand the plans and motives of politicians and policymakers, according to the Washington Post, and not for the purpose of leaking information to the public. A report by Dragos stated that Sandworm has been targeting U.S. electric utilities, oil and gas, and other industrial firms since at least 2017, and were successful in breaching these firms a handful of times. Well, folks, this is not all. There's still more. Microsoft observed a series of destructive hybrid attacks against Ukraine by Russians. Russia-aligned actors began pre-positioning for conflict as early as March 2021 escalating actions against organizations inside or allied with Ukraine to gain a larger foothold into Ukrainian systems. When Russian troops first started to move towards the border with Ukraine, we saw efforts to gain initial access to targets that could provide intelligence on Ukraine's military and foreign partnerships. By mid-2021, Russian actors were targeting supply chain vendors in Ukraine and abroad to secure further access not only to systems in Ukraine, but also NATO member sites. In early 2022, when diplomatic efforts failed to de-escalate mounting tensions around Russia's military buildup along Ukraine's borders, Russian actors launched destructive wiper malware attacks against Ukrainian organizations with increasing intensity. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began, Russian cyber attacks have been deployed to support the military strategic and tactical objectives. It's likely that the attacks we've observed are only a fraction of activity targeting Ukraine. Microsoft security teams have worked closely with Ukrainian government officials and cybersecurity staff at government organizations and private enterprises to identify and remediate threat activity against Ukrainian networks. In January of this year, when the Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center MSTIC, discovered wiper malware in more than a dozen networks in Ukraine, we alerted the Ukrainian government and published our findings. Following that incident, we established a secure line of communication with key cyber officials in Ukraine to be sure that we could act rapidly with trusted partners to help Ukrainian government agencies, enterprises, and organizations defend against attacks. This has included 24-7 sharing of threat intelligence and deployment of technical countermeasures to defeat the observed malware. What could get worse than this? I pity the people that have to face this. The relentless and destructive Russian cyber attacks that have been observed in a hybrid war against Ukraine is what's done on Microsoft's part to help protect Ukrainian people and organizations. They believe it's important to share this information so that policymakers and the public around the world know what's occurring, and so others in the security community can continue to identify and defend against this activity. 
All of this work is ultimately focused on protecting civilians from attacks that can directly impact their lives and their access to critical services. The alerts published by CISA and other U.S. government agencies and cyber officials in other countries should be taken seriously, and the recommended defensive and resilience measures should be taken, especially by government agencies and critical infrastructure enterprises. These reports include specific recommendations for organizations that may be targeted by Russian actors, as well as technical information for the cybersecurity community. We'll continue to provide updates as we observe activity and believe we can safely disclose new developments. I hope they keep up the good work on their part and people follow all steps and alerts seriously to stay safe. That's a wrap for today. Stay tuned with our channel to stay updated on the latest news.